Welcome back, viewers at home, to the Heroes Lounge Epic Cup. I'm Karis, and joining me here is... Heroes at School. Hello again. So, it's a delight to cast with you again for this next quarterfinal, which will be between Unstoppable and Diablo Immortal. Um, so, what can we expect from these two teams as they go head-to-head -head in the next quarterfinal? Well, I think we can expect um, uh, maybe more closer game um, just by the numbers that we saw so far. Um, the teams finished like I think unstoppable, unstoppable, <laughs> finished in uh, in fourth place in the regular season, and uh, Diablo Immortal in sixth place. But both teams actually with seven wins during the regular season, so um, fairly even, I guess, counting to that. And uh, yeah, just from the hero picks, it's going to be interesting because both teams actually really, really like that cry main. And, um, yeah, map's going to be interesting as well. I guess we're going to see Battlefield of Eternity at some point today, um, as both teams like to play it and like to pick it themselves. And uh, we know Battlefield of Eternity is a lot about uh, the team fights and the setups that you have there. So, yeah, uh, open game, I guess, this time, very much. Yeah, I think it's... Um, we'll have to see how they uh, how they go with this so we have actually some news about map bands so i believe we should see so that's the volskaya and alterac have been banned by unstoppable and then dragonshire and towers of doom have been banned by diablo immortal and the first map will be tomb of the spider queen as picked by Unstoppable. So, what should we expect from Tomb of the Spider Queen? Um, well, that's that's kind of interesting to see. Um, did not expect either team to go for that. Uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen, we do have a fairly, actually, negative record for the team of Diablo Immortal here, who only have 25%, so they won one out of the four games they played on that. And on the other side, um, we saw, like, Two out of three games won for the side of Unstoppable. So both teams not picking or not playing that map way too often. So, um, who, by the way, who, who chose the map? Uh, uh, Unstoppable. Unstoppable. So yeah, that makes kind of a lot of sense. You know, rather go for the weakness of the any of the opponent um, rather than your own strength. And the map was available, so why not go for it? Yeah, I think that makes sense. But then. I'm always cautious about that with, with map picks, you know, that go for the, your opponent's weakness strategy, because it feels like, you know, if a team's lost to teams on or Team of the Spider Queen, for example, it's probably because they were playing against teams who had a specific plan on that map and they didn't have one. So, you know, yes, Diablo Immortal may, may not have a plan here, but then the question is, do Unstoppable have a plan lined up to pressure them and if they don't then it, it that pick, map pick could backfire yeah i uh, totally agree on that um i think like if we if we take a look at the picks they run so far um diablo immortal really like to go for the sylvana sometimes which i think is a great pick on tomb of the spider queen um i think like in general um, you really want to have that strong wave clear. Very often the team that is better at rotating between the mid and the top lane is actually far ahead in this map. Um, we might see a Xul comp coming in here though, and we have to um, take, or we have to have in mind that um, all the numbers that we're talking about are not referring to the new tool setup because that is barely done for a week um, that he's accepted in Heroes Lounge drafts. So. Um, yeah, that, that brings kind of a new thing to it, and we might even see a ban against him. Yeah, that could be... I think the Zul... <clears throat> You've got to think about banning Zul here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, and if they're not, if they're not banning it, they better have an answer. So, um, because, because, because the wave clear pressure, and of course just Zul just being so strong at the moment. But we saw, you know, like we saw earlier, I mean, like you were saying, it's not dominating so far in these lower divisions. The Zul pick, so hard yeah, to say exactly. Surprised actually by that, but um, like we saw in the first uh, map of the earlier quarterfinal that we witnessed, um, we saw the Zul pick and, it, and it didn't work out. Although he did provide a lot of damage, 
Um, I think what you really want to have with that, and uh, we actually didn't talk about this there, but I didn't don't think they have like a good setup for the bone prison because it's such a strong tool to have a bone prison available because you know where your target is going to be locked down. And if you have something like Chromie or Liming or, you know, any burst mage, you can really benefit from that a lot. And we didn't see that. Yeah, I forgot what hero they ran with it, actually. But uh, you're right, it was not... They didn't seem to have that that execution with the with the bone prison. Well, well they had the Liming, but um, that shot these shots are actually easy to block if you're not way out of position. And uh, fair, well, it gotta be fair to say that they um, had to the bone prison very often on the Johanna, which is like not not the one you wanna have it. Well, I believe we are about to go into the draft in game number one in this best of three quarterfinal. Unstoppable versus Diablo Immortal. Chat, by the way, does it look like uh, they want to give it up for a Gazlo pick here? Not seeing that coming, to be honest, but you know. <laughs> Let's get the Gazlo out. Let's see Let's see what we can do. Um, I, I, I would love to see a Gazlo here. I think that could be, could be an option. I don't know. It seems unlikely, but you never know. I, maybe we can get some stats on Gazlo. Uh, about how Ga Gazlo's performance in divisions four and five. Let's we'll see if we can get those. I, uh, maybe they. I think Gazlo might have been the hero that they never played. In in, to in, comp in like in general in in <laughs> divisions four and five, nobody played the Gazlo. That's harsh. I I <laughs> think okay. that might be the case. Either that or Probius. I will I will get the stats up as soon as I can. But yeah, it's um. There was a hero like that who. So Chet we... really wants to see it apparently, and um, I, I can understand that because we all know the beautiful setups of a Grubber Bomb. Um, but before we talk too much about a hero that is not picked <laughs> in any way possible and imaginable here, um, we go with the Greyman ban first, and that's not surprising to me. You really want to um, get it rid of, just get it out. Uh, kind of surprised that actually the first picking team banned it, but you know. Um, makes some sense at, at all, because both teams really love that. And there's the Joanna first, but Joanna such a strong tank on this map in particular, although generally on, on most maps, to be honest. So, you know, not surprising. Yeah, I mean, we I see Sul let open yet, and uh, through the ban phase and through the first pick. And I know Johanna is like kind of the first character you want to not have Sul against, but they're going to come some nice and squishy targets for it. So um, Sul is available here. Instead, we see the High Lord coming back in and the Conqueror in white main. Surprised not to see the Zul pick up there. Um, again, these, these teams don't seem to love that Zul as much as... I mean, maybe. to be honest with you, I, I would... I would pick him now. I mean, for, for the side of, of Diablo Immortal, it's got to be a really strong pick here. White may no escapes, Alarak hardly any escapes. Um, the counter strike is going to be there in time, but uh, you have the Johanna on your side, so you're not going to get countered by her. And um, yeah, he's not going to be picked here. You know what I mean? I'm just a caster, so <laughs> I'm, I'm out. Uh, but we see the Raynor and the Gul'dan for the strong wave clear here. Apparently, um, strong pick here, Reyna, just to keep Alarak maybe on distance. And uh, yeah, surprised even by the early commit to the white man here. Yeah, I, uh, I think there's uh, there's a few surprising picks going on. I, I mean, Reyna and Gul'dan both great picks, and they they're good for the map as well. There's a variant we don't know yet if that's main tank or off lane. I'd like to see it go main tank actually, and I think a taunt combination here might be a good option. To set up Alarak in particular, but they could all th theoretically put it in the offlane and still go taunt, or they could go smash, for example. Yeah, I mean we know that you don't have to have the best wave clear in the offlane here on Tomb of the Spider Queen because the maps are so narrow. If you do struggle on the offlane, there's a quick rotation coming in, and you're gonna lose basically no time to help out your solo laner here. And we see the Yorick and the Malfurion last pick. So. Fairly standard draft. I don't see a particular Tomb of the Spider Queen idea here on the side of Diablo Immortal. Uh, or on either side, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, a strong draft nonetheless. Mm. And there's the floor. So it is Varian main tank. Um, 
I mean, what? It is a slightly flimsy front line because it, if Varian gets locked down, he can die. I think if he's not locked down, he's just got unlimited self-sustain. He'll be fine. But if he gets somehow CC, there isn't that much hard CC. It's only the roots from Malf, I think, that he has to really worry about. If, he, if he's rooted and he's not able to hit anybody, then he might struggle potentially. Uh, I mean, survivability. I'm honest with you. I I actually I favor the draft of uh, the variant comp here, um, but just because I think um, we you do not see the uh, the counters to it on the right side. Um, we see the sustain fight set up with the Rainer and the poison damage of the Gul'dan, but on such a narrow map, poison damage and sustain fights are very very welcome for the white main. Um, the ones thing white main is really weak against i know you want to get her down and get the mana out but you know the, this map is so small even if the mana is drained of the white man you just go back with her and you'll back, be back in no seconds and just don't have to fight in the meantime and um i would have loved i would have loved to see a lockdown on her specifically and um we don't see any setup of that uh so maybe we could have seen an end win um for the falling sword light bomb set up something like that i could have imagined so many things here but they just didn't happen so with the poison damage and the white main counter to it i really favor the draft for unstoppable well <clears throat> let's see what happens as we go into game number one in the best of three and in blue on the left we have and Seferum on Varian, we have Bebo on White Main, we have Yukaba on Thrall, we have Suspect on Alarak, and we have Knetum62155 on the Valor, and they are unstoppable! And on the right side, Diablo Immortal in red, coming in with Wok on Reyna, we have Kubra on the Leoric, we have Wintex playing the Johanna, we have Actacam on Malfurion, and Bubulos on the Gul'dan. So, straight away, team's going for the mid brawl, but Thrall thinking about rotating to the uh, off lane there. So, actually, we have, uh, we can see, I think, some stats on Varian there in divisions four and five. Oh, yeah. 10% tech rate. It's actually lines more. Oh! Well, interesting to see that. I mean, you usually see reactive parry here on level one taken if you go for a taunt build, and it has to be a taunt build. Uh, Otherwise, I would be really surprised, and I, I would love this game already. But um, I think we're gonna see a taunt setup here. But usually, you take that um, over reactive over parry because you really wanna um, have that special. Like you provide some bonus burst damage on the target because you get two heroic strikes on the target taunted target. Because if you manage it correctly, you get two auto attacks in, and you get auto attack yourself on the parry in the meantime, so you get another heroic strike, and that helps you a lot with bursting down the target, especially later when you even deny some healing with it after level 13. Um, so, yeah, kind of surprised that we actually see the lions more here, which does not give you that much benefit in the regular season. But so far, we really see beautiful setups from the Alarak here, and he seems to be a lot of trouble for the side of the Able Mod. Yeah, I mean... I have to say, surprising amount of aggression so far from Unstoppable, given that they've got a Varian pre-level 4, who basically is not a hero, and is just waiting, yeah. you know, he's just a cocoon waiting to emerge as a beautiful butterfly at level 4. But he's, he's, you know, and, and, so normally he's very vulnerable to just getting killed. I'm surprised he hasn't been punished more, because honestly, it, if Diablo Immortal just focus him, at, at this early stage, he will just die. Like, he's got no protect, he's got no extra health he's got no um no victory rush to keep himself to self-sustain so so far kind of surprising for, uh, that they haven't blown and, up that and again i mean we see on level one we see loss of hope and since exposed again i think you would have loved that bonus speed on that uh, w from the side of the johanna here and um there we see him coming in unstoppable is taken she's dropping lower and lower silence is there from the alarak and actually johanna pain with the life to the damage there in general and so far we see it like the poisonous damage no problem for white men to out heal it and she doesn't even have mana problems so here's what i think about the laws of hope i suspect that johanna's thinking the following if if she goes for iron skin the problem is that varian 
the Zavarian is at level 13, likely to go for sh shattering, th shattering Throw. And then it sort of doesn't matter that you get that extra... That extra shield value from the Iron Skin. Or whether you've got your shield up or not really. Because Varin's going to blow up Joanna's shield in most of these fights. And then just taunt her anyway. As soon as the Iron Skin has been destroyed by the Shattering Throw. So that, yeah, that I just suspect is why they're The planned. setup from, uh, that you talked about it from the Varian for the Alarak here. And taunt is ready again already. And if, you, if they're not careful in the backline. Look at Alarak walking in position for a good um, shot at Gul'dan. Maybe Gul'dan here barely just dodging it. And if Varian sets him up, the Alarak is going to stack quite a lot. And they have to be really careful about that. So this is why I love Varian as a tank. I think he has that playmaker potential to just find the target, bang, and all your teammates immediately can just destroy that target. The way to respond to that, and the thing that we're not seeing yet from Diablo Immortal, is you just run at the enemy, you just run at the Varian team, because he can't peel off multiple members. You know, when multiple people run in at his backline, what's he going to do? You know, he, just, he can only taunt one person. And then yeah, they I mean, that's, that's the problem that I've had with the setup uh, on the side of Diablo Immortal. That's, that's what I meant by, like, not really um, going for the counter setup. We even have um, a support with no clans here. I think uh, you needed some thought, like um, the Leap of Faith from the Anduin, or the Rega, or maybe even an Uther. Or something to get rid of that taunted target. And um, Malfurion is not going to have that for quite a lot of time. And even then, he really has um, to be a clutch with that cleanse. Yeah, and as, as you point out, they don't really have any dive either to go with it. So, like, Lyric maybe can cause a bit of a nuisance in the back. But there's nothing like a Zeratul or a Greymane. Okay, Greymane was banned. Or, you know, or even an Alarak, for example, on the side of Diablo Immortal who can dive in and just cause a nuisance for those backliners. Like the White Mane, you know, I think that potentially uh, there isn't enough punishment of Unstoppable's comp going on. And maybe that's why they have Web Weavers rolling in all three lanes right now. So, going to start putting the pressure on the top lane. Two towers down already. Level 7s, by the way. Varian going for the victory rush. Now, that is a great talent. Oh, I missed the Thrall kill on Lyric at the bottom lane. I did not see oh, that coming. I did too. <laughs> um, yeah, so Thrall catching the Lyric there in the defense. Maybe that with the help of the Web Weaver wave, but secured that kill onto Lyric. And he did drop a, a bunch of gems on the deck. I was just about to talk about Varian victory rush and how great a talent that is for self-sustain, because basically... With minion, when you're around minion waves often, which on Tomb of the Spider Queen, you're always around minion waves. It means all the time you have a burst heal for 498 health. Um, so the cooldown naturally of it is 30 seconds. But every time a minion dies, it's reduced by 10 seconds. Well, there's seven minions in a wave. So, you know, you can, yeah. get, you can get that up and running very quickly. Yeah, we actually see an attempt to pay from the side, which is kind of surprising for me, from the side of Diablo Immortal, because you really don't want to pay half a level down towards level 10, because you're ba basically negating your own payment there. Um, but it looks like they throw in some gems, and now they have trouble to really defend even the, just the Bruiser camp off against that level 10. Taunt onto the Johanna. Unstoppable is used from here, but there's a follow-up. And she's dead, and there's 32 gems on the floor. Mafuren is actually able to pick a lot of them up, so he's sitting on 21 now, but the rest of the team has really to be careful. That fort is going down in seconds, and we've seen another engage coming on to the Raynor, and now he's on the run, but will he survive? It looks like barely, yes. So he's gonna get out there, but that camp took the fort in the meanwhile, and they now they even feel comfortable enough to go for the enemy camp, despite facing level 10 themselves right now. This is just a great... A great comp all round from Unstoppable and a great execution. Like, the taunt into Alarak is one idea. And then another idea is telekinesis from Alarak into taunt. And then they've also got, if, if they need to, Thrall can flank and throw an Earthquake. And then that will allow a taunt on anybody they like. So, looking good from Unstoppable. Red Team has managed to get a hand in it. A hand in done. So, that will take a bit of push pressure off them. I'm not sure they're going to be able to push very hard with it though and that might mean it just denies themselves experience 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to just make a decision on which lane you want to go for. They decide to go for the top lane, but it's going to be most aggressively defended from the side of Unstoppable here. Um, first damage coming in, though. The Web Weaver is still pretty healthy, and now they have to be careful. Mid Web Weaver is nowhere near to do some damage, though. Bot Web Weaver is somehow, but um, yeah, just keep them busy is the general idea. I think, I think it's a small play here. And there we see a taunt coming in onto the Mafurion. Follow up with the silence is there, but Mafurion's still alive, but now he dies. And that's, again, the power of the taunt setup. Malfurion caught out of position there and immediately taken away, as well as just the nice telekinesis setup from Rain, uh, from Alaric against the Reyna here and the follow-up damage from Bala enough to take him down as well. So we're sitting at 6 to 7, by the way. Excuse me. <laughs> Leoric dying in the bot lane to Thrall again. 7 to 0 kills and a clear lead um, for the side of Unstoppable. Yep, and the another five or so gems dropped by the Oric means that they've now got 15 compared to the 80 of of Unstoppable combined with their 16. So really 90 gems behind in terms of total hand in or something like that. Um, yeah, and they just barely need around 100 for a double payment. So if they go for a payment now and collect the missing, I don't know what it was, like 20 or something, um, in the meantime, which will they easily do, they do have a double payment ready and they have a talent lead and this could at least cost the keep here. Um, so if they don't find an entrance to this game now, we saw an engage maybe on the Thrall that Leoric trying to go for the Entomb here, but instead they catch the Johanna, he wait out of position um, and she's trying to run for her life, actually having to use Blessed Shield defensively and we talked about it, that they need offensive um, power here somehow and they do not provide with that we see actually Leoric die another time to the damage of Alarak who is way overpowered now especially with 104 sadism so yeah looks rough for the side of the Uh it looks very rough indeed because the uh, just devastating combination and the thing is no one is safe from this taunt but that's a beautiful horrify the problem is Thrall was going, running the wrong way from it and Thrall gets away they needed a kill there now Joanna's not particularly safe Yorick will be back he slips back for now he will be able to get the tap on and they will all survive but that looked like it was meant to be an engage in favor of Diablo Immortal Dead Johanna instead we see the Diorik in tomb but he just falls it's just meat in front of the entrance of the Entomb and uh, he gets crushed out of the way. Mid wave is pushing really hard. Top wave is gonna do some damage towards the top keep and bot keep is actually surviving for the moment. Um, but it, again, as we said before, double payment is ready. Um, so yeah, it can only hold for so long here. And yeah, we talked about it and you had the, you got an idea there with the engage on the Thrall that we just saw there, how dangerous it could be. We know about the burst heal potential of a white main, so you really have to engage on her. Um, but just in general, from the fights that we've seen so far, um, that was the most dangerous 40 side of Unstoppable here. Yeah, and they're going for immediately for boss, and they will have turn in as well. I This is a rough situation for, for Diablo Immortal. I suspect they don't have phones, and they may well find that they're losing this game very quickly if they don't do something drastic urgently, because that boss is already marching on the top keep. In comes the Webweaver pay again or on already pushed mid and bot lanes, and on the top lane where there's already boss. So they're going to march top. They've got the level 16 advantage. If Alaric finds a telekinesis here, if Varian finds a taunt, it could all be over in half a second or less. Telekinesis and the Q missed from Alarak that gives them maybe some crucial seconds. We see the Wraithwalk actually coming in who's denying some damage. There's the Earthquake who's setting quite a lot of damage up. Alaric trying to survive somehow there but there's no chance. You basically could take out any target that's right up your nose. So Leoric in this time is the first to fall. Um, taunt is ready again. There we see a Taunt on Gul'dan and he has no chance of surviving that. And there goes another time to Johanna. And there we see maybe even the Reyna fall. Yes, we do. Malfurion is the last to survive, but I don't think they care too much about him, except White Mane, who does give a casual auto attacks on him. But, you know, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Alarak even trying to go for that last kill as well. Going for <laughs> killing him with the Counter Strike. What a finish in style there. And this is the first game going in the hands of Unstoppable. GG and well played.
GG, well played indeed, and they looked, I have to say, pretty devastating, and I'm not sure, I mean, if, you've, if you're on the side of Diablo Immortal here, you've got to be feeling very uneasy about what you've just experienced, because that was an absolute demolition by Unstoppable. 15 kills to zero. Yeah, and I mean, we talked about the map advantage, and we know that um, Diablo Immortal do have a negative record on Tomb of the Spider Queen. But to be honest with you, that was not to blame on the map. I think they just got outdrafted a lot there. And um, yeah, we talked about it a lot. They needed that hard engage. They needed that engage against the Varian and like Alarak, White Mane, all good targets for a clear engage. They're missing this crucial cleanse that they would need um, for a strong setup there. And them themselves had to pick something to like cleanse that one target. Because if you go for that single target setup on the side of um, unstoppable, you could just have avoided all of that damage happening with like um, a Rhaegar cleanse or the Anduin uh, Leap of Faith. All that stuff could have helped them a lot. Um, it didn't in the end. And we all know that once you get the ball rolling with Elrak, it's going to be really hard to stop him. He's, we may call it, he's then unstoppable. Uh, you get the idea in the name now, but yeah, strong performance from him as well. And if you look at the damage, we even see Gul'dan having top damage in this um, in this setup. But uh, we spoke about this um, as, as well. Like, if you have a white main setup, no problem with the poison damage. You can really negate a lot of that with all the healing that she provides. Yeah, and also there's different kinds of damage. Like, in a sense, the Unstoppable didn't get a chance to do much damage because they were usually killing the enemy too fast. And if your enemy's dead, you can't damage them anymore. And that's really the difference here. That's why you see those damage numbers bigger on Gul'dan than than on than on Valor, for example. Um, so very uh, very solid stuff from Unstoppable. Uh, and Diablo Immortal right now have to think: How do I stop this from happening? Yeah, I mean, Again. Um, you. You have to have an idea against um, against that Alarak. You have to maybe go for a more aggressive combination there. Um, I think um, we might agree for level six team that could have maybe made a difference there. Um, late game in general could have done, as we all know that Varian setups lose on value the later the, the longer the game goes. Um, but you know, I think we might have had this um, this echoed corruption, this bonus damage that is coming in. What's the talent called on Gul'dan? Uh, I don't know really. I, I I forgot, but you know that bonus damage on the third hit from the echoed corruption um, that that could have maybe made a difference there, but it was it was way 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 too late then. Yeah, maybe. I think that's yeah. It was it. And I'm now we have some news about maps, and you were absolutely right in something you were saying earlier. We are going to go to Battlefield of Eternity for game number three. What do we expect uh, here from Diablo uh, Immortal? Yes. But, um, yeah, I was expecting that for sure because Diablo Immortal, um, even not bothering for a second there with the first pick, um, not too surprised because they do have 80% win rate on that, and uh, they really love play this map as well um this it's like the second favorite map from them apart from Vault sky foundry which was banned um so battlefield of an eternity logical choice here for the Oblimo. yeah well hopefully they will be able to secure themselves the immortal on the side of diablo immortal that's a stretch, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> while we while we wait for that game to get set up, I mean, so the draft on Diablo Immortal definitely going to be a lot about race and a lot about team fight. So, what is it that Diablo Immortal normally pick here? You know, why is it one of their favorite maps? Well, I just have the general rules from them, and we know that they favor the uh, Greymane very much. Greymane would be a strong pick here, but I expect him to be banned again. And then on the other side for uh, Diablo Immortal, we see them pick very often the Junkrat, but I think that is like more the setup for what Sky Foundry is very strong there. Um, they do have a fairly strong um, win rate on the Sylvanas, which could help here quite a lot. Um, Li Ming, I guess, is going to be top notch here on the, on the draft. We're going to see her picked very soon, I guess. And we know that like in general, um, Johanna setups work here very well as well. So 
I expect um, to uh, an early pick on the Li Ming and an early pick, if available, on the Grey Main. Yeah, I, I think those are things we are likely to see uh, in this draft. So, you're watching Heroes Lounge Epic Cup, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second quarterfinal that we've got. We've got another one over on twitch.tv slash heroes lounge 2 going on right now um i haven't got any scores in from there just yet but i think they are in still in their first match actually so we will keep an eye on that so with that we are about to go into the draft of game number two on battlefield of eternity Yes, our first pick is in the hands of uh, Unstoppable here, and um, it's going to be interesting to see if if they really go for the Greyman ban because they can play him themselves. Um, so they might go for a denial by picking first, picking him here. Um, but then you got to make a choice and maybe even ban that Li Ming here, which would make some sense here, I guess. Um, we might see a ban against Alarak because I don't think there's any better target for them to ban here, and they for letting him in open in the first game. Well, took their time and they went with the ETC here. Um, very uh, often picked by um, the <laughs> by Diablo Immortal and they immediately react with, okay, we have it. we've had enough of that. Let's get rid of the high lot here. We've had enough of that. Yeah, I mean, that's... It was such an important pick for for unstoppable in game number one i have to say i rather thought that the varian was more impactful in terms of securing the kill and they didn't really have an answer to that taunt varian play in game number one but we'll we'll see what their plan is in game number two if that gets picked up by unstoppable again which they may well not do because of the difference in map Okay, so unstoppable banning the uh, Vala here um, just to take off the race. Um, I'm kind of surprised because they obviously like to play her themselves. They had her in the first match. And we see the answer of the Garrosh ban. We know Garrosh is exceptionally well on Battlefield of Eternity as there are no minions or almost no minions to block him. And he can place his throws into the Immortal stuns if you have to find underneath them. Um, so that's given you quite a potential in setups. And we see... The highly prioritized Liming here, and immediately the reaction by taking at least Diana away from. Him. And surely this is going to be the Grey Main as well. Yes. Man. Yes, Grey Main here. Um, this had to be done. Kind of surprised that. Um, well, okay. I mean, Anna taken away from Liming makes a lot of sense, but again, you go for a support who does not offer a cleanse for quite a long time. Um, so I fear for another Tom setup, and we know that can be devastating with Liming here. Am I right in saying that? Diablo Immortal have changed a player as well. Uh, in between game one and two. Ooh, I kind of lost record on that, to be honest with I you. I think Bubalos might have left and been replaced by Nexus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It looks like it, yes. So, interesting kind of roster, twi roster tweak there from the team. But then, by the way, another Taunt Varian there being picked up by Enciferum. Well, at least what we expect to be a Taunt Varian, but... Um... I'd hardly expect anything else. And we see Alex Strasser pick. Unstoppable um, actually liking the Alex Strasser quite a lot, having a good win rate on her. And uh, Battlefield of Eternity is one of the maps that she actually can perform well on. So, yeah, so something that they, they definitely like to play. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've i not seen Alex Strasser get picked much on Battlefield of Eternity. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how they play with that and, you know, what are the moments that they choose to use the uh the alex the dragon queen and how impactful can they make that yes love the diablo and the jaina i love that pick so okay so for i mean they do have an engage comp and um that's that's what we've been looking for in game number one so i think they might have an answer here if they find a good engage apoc engage on alex Strasser can be devastating with the burst damage on the jaina it may be even especially with nano boost and a gray man who does offer a lot of bursts himself um so yeah that's kind of the stuff i was looking for and i feel way better for the second draft um of diablo immortal i i 
I agree completely. I, I like that. I like that aggression. I like the the Diablo Jaina idea. I think everything everything so far looking very nice from the side of Diablo Immortal in this draft. However, <clears throat> now they've added a little bit more spice on the side of Unstoppable with that Chen who's going to potentially punish Anna and Jaina in that backline. Is that going to be a problem for them? Can Diablo handle that? Well, we all know that Diablo is kind of weak um, against that. Um, but I think before really Chen does have his value in the backline, um, if they if they just go fully through it, that is going to matter a lot on uh, positioning because they have to find they engage themselves and just don't worry about the panda, just kill him last. Um, because if you you got to find your way to Han So, Alex Straza and Li Ming. Um, and we know that Alex Straza, if she doesn't go for the life binder, and does get it off in time, doesn't not offer all too much of a, of the burst heal potential, of that saving potential that they need, because they don't have any clans themselves. So, um, yeah, really, really way better draft. And I want to see a third game, to be honest with you. So, um, like, how, how do you bet points? By it's, I mean, it's bet B, Exclamation because I want to bet on Diablo B, Immortal. And then, yeah, and then I, the, num I'm, I'm the number that you how want. How many points do you have at the start? Uh, you've probably got quite a few by now if you've been... Oh, you can type exclamation mark points to see how many points you got. Okay, okay. Let let me quickly check that first. So I do have I do have uh, I get a point I, I get a message. You've got. Oh, I don't have too many. Oh boy. Um, but you know I I'm gonna I'm gonna bet 500 points on the Diablo model because I really favor the draft in this game. Okay. Well, we'll have to uh, have to see how that plays. If anyone else wants to bet against. Against Heroes at School, you can type exclamation mark bet A and a number of points. I see that one or two people have done that already. And you've got about one minute left to get your bets in now before the game starts. So, so how, how do you feel about the draft? Like, I mean, do you think like the engage is well enough? And I think like Jaina can survive herself with the um, with the ice block once she has it up. So, yeah, I, I feel it's strong enough. How do you feel about it? I... I agree. I'm slightly worried that maybe they can't handle the the Chen dive, and I'm also, but I am thinking that I, it's hard to say who's got the better race here. I think the red team has the better race, despite the leaming on the side of uh, unstoppable. Well, we'll have to see anyway what happens as we actually go into this game. Number two, out of a best of three, on the left side in blue. Again, make some noise in the chat for Unstoppable with Bebo playing that Hanzo. Sorry, that Bebo playing that Alex Straza. We have Enciferum on the Varian. Suspect on the Leeming. Knetum 62155, which rolls off the tongue on Hanzo. And Yukra on Chen. And on the right side, Diablo Immortal going for that 1-1 one, one that they really need for the Equalizer. We have Wok on Jaina. We have Wintex playing the gray main we have kubra on sonya we have Ectacam on diablo and the new player nexus switching in for the support role on the anna here so level one talents diablo going for the soul shield wants to be able to survive a min combo if he gets taunted the question is will he be able to press that soul shield in time nice chart turnover on varin look at more aggression on tavari in early game that's exactly what they needed perfectly uh, perfect ideas here from Diablo Immortal immediately reacting to how they suffered in the last game because before if you remember what I was saying last game before level four you really need to punish that variant because they got he's not a hero well that's exactly what they tried to do here and I'm hoping they're gonna we're gonna see more of that aggression early game from them of course Diablo is not particularly tanky himself early game so it can be sort of swings and roundabouts for Diablo Immortal here I'm kind of surprised by the um, by the soul shield pick here. Um, it's gonna help a lot against the Ming and the Hanzo damage. But then, all in all, I really prefer the Feast on Fear Talon because it gives you that crucial health when you need it most. Because that's when you go in. Um, so I might have expected that talent here. Instead, they go for the soul shield. I think it's likely to be Apocalypse as well. So normally, soul shield synergizes very well with Lightning Breath. I don't imagine they'll go lightning breath against the Chen and stuff. I think he won't. Well, they're gonna I, 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 would I would be disappointed and take my points back then because, like we talked about it, the all the general idea against this variant is the engage setup that they do have, 
um, with Greyman and Jaina, so um, I, it surely has to be a pocket. Yeah, uh, sure. Another, I... That's the overpower that we've been looking for, and actually, Dragon is even used here. He's gonna be healed in time with the Dragon Lady, and maybe the is gonna pay for his life with that, but that's a Dragon going off, but the double kill, that's a little bit too much. Ooh, close call for the Ana there as well, and it's a double kill for a Dragon. That's a little bit too much, I guess. I think um, that's... I, lift with one kill. I think that's a big misstep from Diablo Immortal in the sense that as soon as they see the dragon coming out, that's the time to say, right, turn around, we give up on what we're doing. There's no, we don't need to chase a Varian kill. Who cares whether we've got a Varian kill? We've forced a dragon cooldown. That's enough. We can just back off and not commit any resources. But they still carried on trying to secure that kill. When the dragon healing comes out, it's a bit too ambitious. So I would have liked to see them back off there. Still. They're only a quarter of a level down. It did cost them a camp, but nothing too much to worry about as they rotate bot to clear that camp and get in position for this first immortal phase. Okay, so we see immediately the start of the race and uh, we see Unstoppable starting it a little bit late and um, we have the way faster race in general, uh, as we talked about it earlier uh, on the side of the Diablo Immortal. So that's uh, quite a good halftime. And we see the offensive position here for both teams. So there's an Hanzo that would be accessible, but instead we see Diablo isolating himself from the rest of the team, but he still gets the engage onto the Hanzo. That's a very <gasps> strong engage. And if he had that level four or seven malevolence, that Hanzo would have been dead. He's out of the fight for now. And Sonya and Diablo are doing quite a good job for tanking the limiting damage for the rest of the team. Never mind level four or seven. If he'd sneezed on Hanzo, Hanzo would have died there. Uh, so 13 HP he went down to. Sonya's got to spin to win to get out of here. I don't know if he will. That's a lovely heal from Nexus, but it's just not enough to keep Sonya in the game. And that means that now with this defense of 4v5, uh, maybe Hanzo can just race while the Chen zones out the Jaina. Lovely heals from Nexus. <gasps> Ooh, nice that dodge. Luck. Crazy. The problem is Hansel, how they get this. Like he's on 20 HP. <laughs> he has been on 20 HP, but still, it looks like he gets the value. And and Jaina is trying to give the finishing blow. And there we see them. They, they get, did it. get it. Hanzo is out of the way, but Pena, Jaina pays with her life with the or the immortal here. Um. So yeah, that's that's more a game that we would have loved to see at the very least. So that's more even, and I think we're gonna see more to come. Yeah, so it is even, but I think that's not a great trade for Diablo Immortal, given how well they were doing that early game race. And they just sort of panic trickled a little bit, I think, and went in one at a time, just trying to get their last scraps. And of course, when you go in one at a time, it's quite easy for Chen to punish you, for Varian to punish you. And that's... We see an attempt on Chen to burst him down, and they're gonna get this done. So that's a smart call, not going with the low shield or the model here. And they do have the better race on the building, so um, I wouldn't go for the bot lane to defend this off. I would have immediately changed and go for, okay, if they got bottom fort, let's go top fort. They could have gotten this in seconds with Greymane and Jaina, and they would have been way faster in the race. I think they were worried about the XP as well, not giving up that juicy wave of XP at the bot lane. But yeah, you're right, they could have gone, done some serious structural damage at the top lane. Um, and in fact, they have given up a bit of XP in the top as well. So maybe maybe not perfectly efficient steps here from Diablo Immortal. Varian flanking, wants to find the taunt onto a backline. They don't know he's there. I think, yes, yeah, so if we look at the vision of... That's the wrong player. <laughs> and they go, in goes Varian. Gets on, gets and the that's taunt. What, on. That's the answer. That's how you got to deal with it. You know, you see the taunt coming in. No, forget the Varian, forget the peel. Go for the one target that wants to follow him up. Dragon is pulled off again. And if they don't mess it up this time, they're going to not pay for too much for it. Yep, and that's that's a good result for Diablo Immortal. Exactly right. As soon as the taunt comes in, get the counter gauge, force the panic dragon. When the dragon comes out, back off and say, look, you've used your taunt. What are you going to do now? You've used your taunt, you've used your dragon, and now those cooldowns are down. Maybe they can look to engage here. Diablo walking into the taunt. There's the damage from from Gene. Oh, Nice charge he's in from Active there in time, But now he's isolated. The rest of the team follows up. Jaina damage. Where are you? There's another... Healing ring, but it's not enough. Diablo cannot survive long enough. And now we have the resets for Li Ming, and that's trouble because the damage is there. Oh boy. Oh wow. Five kills for zero because, of course, Chen also killed Sonya in the top lane while that was going on. <laughs> and now that's looking more like the confidence of Unstoppable to be saw in game number one because as soon as they start snowballing this game, Li Ming is going to become fearsome. The more. The more they can get those first kills in the fight, the more Li Ming is going to be absolutely terrifying. And the, the, with the Varian taunt to set up that Li Ming, 
it could be potentially devastating. It sure does, and um, we do have the level 10 advantage for quite some time now for the side of um, Unstoppable. So they're gonna get, at the very least, uh, the half time. They probably get the Immortal as well. Um, we see the Double Immortal trying to go for some shielding or taking away of the shields at least. Um, it looks like they get a fair position on that. Yes, they get a trade, so they can do at least some damage to that with Grayman and Jaina. They're gonna get some of the shielding down here. Yeah, they will get the shield down a bit and decent damage, but they're still not level 10. Sonya doing her best to so get themselves towards that level 10. I think their plan is probably to give this top fort. Uh, although they will be back up in top lane in time, but the, the, bear in mind with this amount of shield, it probably will get through that top fort. And then they just got to make sure they don't turn it into any more deaths. I don't think they're looking for an engage yet, although with Sonya rotating top, maybe they'll force. We have actually Wrath of the Berserker. I would have loved to see a leap set up um, to go really for that full blow up on the single target that Diablo can call out there. We see a sleep dot, but the taunt against Diablo to not find an engage here. Apocalypse is immediately interrupted here, the engage from him, but they still get the kill against the Liming, and they should be happy with that. And now instead, go back. We have the water elemental, by the way, taken, so no ring. Um, makes some sense to really help out the targets. There's the engage coming in onto the Hunter again in the back line. We see the taunt on the other side against the Greyman, but he still goes for the Hunter and goes for the blow up with his level 10 and he goes for another and cannot jump out there, although Hanzo try, uh, Anna tried to heal him as, so, um, as she could, but Diablo will kill him. Two Man, for okay. one, and the yes, they're getting the four. Hang on, Chen's thinking about coming more, but th this is this is 3v4. <laughs> Confidence yeah. there from Chen, Varian, and Alex Straza. Um, of course, Chen still has his heroic, which is dangerous for Anna and Jaina in particular. By the way, we do see a full flame build for the Alexstrasza coming in. Um, that's something you don't see all too often, but she's uh, doing very well with it so far. And we see actually cleansing flame, so no life binder taken, despite the single target engaged that the opponent team has here. Yeah, I'm surprised, but I guess they, they're thinking the burst might be just be too fast. And they, if, at some point, you know, if you can't do anything about that burst, then maybe you... You try to play for sustain instead. Oh, that's a taunt onto, Var onto Diablo. There's a sleep from Anna. Just about saved Diablo for now. Lovely turnover. Alex Strasser gets away in the cleansing flame. Jaina, though, has died on the other side. And so is Anna. Chen's starting to go to town here with the Boogie Wonderland. Chasing in. The taunt is available in a fraction of a second. Looking for anyone he can find on the side of Enciferum. But the red team will back off now. But two kills still for nothing. Well, they do need that kill against the Alex Strasser there. She was dropping really low, but once she was in the air, no chance to catch her. And afterwards, um, she does have the Dragon Lady available. So, yeah, very well played from the side of uh, Unstoppable, who really find a way to blocking out the rest of the team or the Diablo himself, depending on what they can achieve easier. So, they are doing really well here. Yeah, and they, they will be able to... Um... Just push on a bit and then get him set up nicely for this next immortal phase. So, fairly confident first half of this game so far from Unstoppable. And they are beginning to look indeed unstoppable. Indio's Diablo, not level 13 yet. Confidence there to go in in that situation. Taunts there. The spell shield pops. 75 spell armor available for Actacam. Sits away. Anna with the heals. Keeps Actacam alive for now. The water elemental slowing onto Varian and just looks to chase for more. I actually saw Nano Boost used there, but not uh, too much benefit from it. And there they go back in again. It's eight seconds for an Apocalypse, and they try to get the um, Chen down here. But if you don't kill him, he's not the best target. But actually, Sonya is able to catch him in the backline there and finish him off. So that's a one to zero for them, and that's what they really needed here. It's even talent, so they can go for the race themselves. Diablo and Sonya should be able to peel a lot of the damage off. That we see them, and actually Li Ming is teleporting back. Varian and Hanzo and Alex Strasser are trying to look their way back in. But they are all squishy, somewhat squishy targets. If Hanzo shows himself like a little bit too much, maybe good engage here against the Alex Strasser from the Diablo. If he's in position there, there he has vision on her. Will he get around her? No, he doesn't. Now they have to go in. There he tries to go in. But we see a taunt on the Sonya in the back line. What a weird apocalypse, but he really bursts on the Alex Strasser and they get her down. And they even got the Immortal Racer on top of that. So really come back here from the Diablo Immortal. That's what they really needed. And they go back because they are five against four and really want to take it.
one actual god tier sleep from the Anna on the Alex Straza, who was about to go into cleansing flame. The the diligence of Nexus to say, I'm not going to allow this, and immediately shutting down that idea. And that's when Alex Straza was was finally killed here in this game. And that was indeed her first death of the game. And that means this immortal can now push fairly confidently with Diablo Immortal behind the immortal. And yeah, well, Diablo it holds no shield, so it's already going down. We see the water elemental, which is just erased in a matter of one and a half second. So that's a 60 second cooldown for nothing. But it's only a 60 second, a 60 second cooldown, so no, no, not too many problems from that. Hanzo, full, full, uh, full scatter build there. Try to get some race value out of that. Um, they appear to have got a tower, or two towers with that immortal. So not a big. Not a big amount of value. The thing is, what they need is to catch up on XP. And that is not going to be helped if Sonya gets ganked. As may happen in the next few seconds. Sonya's just seen that they're coming. She's thinking, I need the camp before I die. Gets the camp, will die. Surely, this is the end of Sonya. Oh, Ian taking Wrath here, but... Well. That's not too big of a cooldown either, so... Um, no problems there, and it would have maybe had a chance to survive, or maybe a slight higher chance, but as you said, there almost was none. So, the... Right now, Diablo Immortal in a bit of a hard place. Uh, look at this potential uh, rotation gank here. Hanzo's oh, Kraymane! Yeah, 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 bye-bye, Kraymane. And the Panic Apoch is not going to help that. Greymane gets a lot of healing no. from Anna, but it's just not enough. The Nano on Jin is there, but she's well. got to hide an Ice Block because of the Chen's all over her. Diablo does it what purely can. The Cleansing Flame comes out, the healing from the skies can... Maybe the Alex Alexstrasza can even finish Jaina with that. No. So they will just use that to safely retreat. The fact that they only got the Greymane kill, probably a slight bit of relief for Diablo Immortal there. Oh, well, I think they did very well with that. Uh, this looked, <laughs> for a short second, this looked like game, potential. So, they get a team wipe that is surely that would have meant game. And now, uh, they still have a fighting chance here. They have four seconds until Greymane, so they can go for the second half fight. Um, they will not have APOC, and they will not have uh, Nano Boost available, though. Um, but on the other side, no Cleansing Flame either. And um, so, I guess it's a fair fight. More importantly, no Chen... No Chen Storm, Earth and Fire. The Boogie Wonderland is not available, but they need to take this fight now because this Immortal is being torn down by Hanzo as we speak. Nice charge in onto Ming, but the taunt onto Diablo he keeps him under pressure. He has the spell armor already. The, the Lee Ming under pressure, but the Dragon Queen keeps her alive. But Varian not so lucky. And the Grey Ming now just trying to put pressure onto Chen, who does not have his heroic available. Lee Ming tries to poke the Immortal. Diablo gets in the way. There she's in! Oh! Immediately the Q I expected it somehow from the Diablo to stun that leaming into the wall and then he she would have been in a horrible position they really have to defend this off as five here currently um if they don't send one at least off to the race this is not gonna change and they will just have another fight with all the cooldowns available yeah, and they, um that's why Sonya has now gone to race, but that means Sonya's not the best race. And Li Ming is being allowed to poke this. They can't allow this. They have to engage before the Chen ult is back up. They need to find something. There they have. Stun onto Chen. But they immediately back up. here just to finish the Immortal off. And that's a good engage as well onto the Ana. And we even see her solo kill from the Li Ming. And Diablo is down as well. He has souls, but that's not a big of a trouble. Because Greyman is going to fall as well here. That's an absolute disaster for Diablo Immortal. They t they they just needed to force really f when they had an advantage. I, mean, I don't think wait the waiting game was ever going to work out in their favor because as soon as Li Ming found that engage, found the Ana, found out that they were split, it was kills and then it was kills and then it was resets, and that means with this immortal pushing in, who's going to defend it? Right now, it is looking like it might be unstoppable in the in the semi final. And it looks like 500 lost points to me, but um, you, you have to be fair. I think the setup was there, but the reaction was just on time here. We see some exchanges. We see Earthwind and Fire coming in back in again. We see Nano Boost, and we actually get the kill against the Li Ming and the kill against Hanzo, and that's what they needed. But Chen and a big fat, excuse me, uh, are still Immortal are still on the core, and it's dropping down to 870%. And that's game unstoppable, winning the series 2 0. GG, and well played. Credit to 
unstoppable because they looked unstoppable. And this game, in this in this Heroes Lounge Epic Cup quarter final, I mean, what is you know what? What could Diablo Immortal have done differently there to, to deal with that relentless pressure from Unstoppable? Well, I think um, we if, if, if it's always the same. If you really want to go for that clear engage and initiation and backline fight, you have to go fully through with it. Um, you could even like maybe more, go more often for the front line because Varian even was kind of a squishy enough target for them. And he was running around in the front beating like a tank should do. And you could have blown him up um, in pieces like in a matter of seconds with a nano boosted Jaina and a Grey Mane. So why not even go for him? Um, instead, well, they still try to go for the back line. And I understand the idea behind that, but I think that's more the idea. If they go for a taunt, then you try to re-engage on the back line that is just moving towards you. And um, yeah, they just went sometimes... Well, it was the little mistakes all in all for me like here and there a death too much and there a death too much we saw um sonia dying in the where we had the quintuple kill um on the top lane at the same time as the whole team got erased on the bot lane and it's just that commitment towards um things that are not value enough like going for that early varian kill who was not worth it you took the dragon out so why you not go for this going for desperately, almost desperately going for the bot siege camp where Diablo had to hold a position, which is not the idea behind the whole combo. Diablo holding a certain position, that's not his his doing, that's not his his um, like his uh, his stuff that he should do. So um, instead, I would have expected them to really go um, full on ham, but together as the whole of a team and um, not value that camp so much, not value that single kill against the Varian so much. I think it, those were the little mistakes that were made and made in the all in all, in the end, they made a difference. I, yes, I absolutely agree. And credit to Unstoppable who looked really strong here and they will be going through to the semi-final against either Mustaches or Johnny Sins, but buddies. So, yeah, I mean, coming up in just a couple of minutes, we'll, we'll have a semi-final. How far can Unstoppable take this, do you think, today? Are they going to go all the way to the grand final? To be honest with you, um, that's by, by the whole analysis that I just made. Um, that was nothing to take away from Unstoppable, because I think um, they had like kind of a perfect answer to a difficult situation, because... Um, they either stop Diablo from the engage or they stop the rest from the team by engaging themselves and they just had this perfect synergy and every member was very well peeled somehow by um, by a team that did not offer too much of peel. Um, so yeah, well played by them and kind of surprised by the form performance that we saw by them. To me, they did not look as strong as we saw AFK uh, in the first match, but it's always difficult to say as long as these two teams are not facing each other. Um, so I think they have their fair shot at least in the semi-final. Will they go through the final or even win it? I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I don't expect them to win it here, but um, they performed very strong in this quarterfinal for sure. Well, let's see how that affects the bracket. Uh, we can see here that uh, Unstoppable will go through to the second semi-final of the day. Coming up very shortly on this channel, we've got the first semi-final of the day, which is AFK for Coco, who earlier we saw beat 2-0 XL5, uh, go up against Sloth Sanctuary, two, who went 2-1 against Turtle Team, and are indeed a sort of Heroes Lounge veteran staff team sort of thing. So, should be a very juicy match coming up in a few minutes. But, for that to happen, I have to leave you. Uh, this, is, this is the end of the road for me. Yeah, you should do. It's not for me, but uh, yeah, we we all gonna miss you. I guess chat chat could, could approve that. I'm going to I'm going to disappear, and when we come back in a few minutes' time, we will have Aviator and Heroes at School again. So don't go anywhere. We will be back in about five minutes or less, hopefully, and we will uh, we'll bring you more juicy more juicy Heroes Lounge action from the Epic Cup, starting with the semi-final. So don't go anywhere. <laughs>